Dear Heavenly Father God, Lord God, we're uh, we're grateful, Father God, to be able to learn probably one of the most important disciplines, God, that we'll, we'll ever know. Uh, God, uh, I pray, Lord, that as we think about a quiet time, God, that as a result of this lesson, God, it won't no longer just be an event, but God it really will be uh, the pillar. It'll be the, 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 the area in which we get our strength. Uh, God, it'll be our retreat. It'll be our, 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 our getaway. Uh, I pray more importantly, God, it'll be our time of complete change. Then we'll see radical change happen, Father God, um, between the time we enter the Word and the time we're out of it, Father God, that we're completely different people every single quiet time this year. And uh, thank you so much for everyone who's here to learn. I pray the Holy Spirit speaks through this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I'm excited to be able to share a lot of thoughts with you guys. Um, this is going to be different. And so we're going to be looking at some ideas that I believe are really important when it comes to having a great quiet time. Not, not in any way am I the master of great quiet times, but I do love my Bible. And I know that for me, one of the best parts of my day, I can honestly say with a clear conscience, is reading my Bible. Um, and hopefully some of the ideas that I share today will be able to help you understand why, why that is the case. So what we'll be talking about today is we have, we have seven, seven R's. I'm going to mainly be focusing on reflecting, recording, and resolving. All right? Reflecting, recording, and resolving. So jump, let's jump right in. Now, I'm not sure about you, but most people love the underdog story. You know, we love, we love movies that have some kind of character who's a weakling, scrawny guy, like we see up here in the Karate Kid, someone who seems weak, seems like he can't overcome challenges, and then what happens? The, the, the master steps in, the trainer, somebody who's able to take this person, love them, love them so much to help them overcome their challenges, and in the end, they become dun, 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 the karate kid. Right. Or like Yoda you with Luke, that way? Like, you know, train them to be a Jedi. Rotate. You know, we, we, we love these concepts like that. because we understand, man, there's something great in having someone who is, who's invested in you to help train you to be your very best, best in, any, in any area. I know for me, I love basketball. And often I kind of imagine, what would it be like if Michael Jordan himself can like devote a year, two years, just making himself accessible to me every single day where I can sit by him, learn, we can go to the gym, he can work, he can work on my shot. You know, I don't have to do too much work on my shot. It's almost like doing it anyway. But, you know, just give me a little bit, you know, just a little small tip you can give me here and there. No, by the way. Or maybe for you, it might be LeBron. Maybe you want LeBron to hang out with you and help you with your game. How sweet would that be, though? I mean, think about what, what, your, what your game would look like after a year or two with LeBron's game every single day. Well, I think for a lot of us, kind of how, like, the same way Karate Kid felt initially in the movie, if you saw the movie, how he felt, it's like, man, I don't have what it takes. I think a lot of times we can feel that way spiritually, where we feel like we're the weak ones. We feel like we can be the ones who can't seem to overcome sin. Yeah. Maybe we don't seem to have the faith that we want. Maybe we don't seem to have the same power that Jesus has. Maybe we just, just don't care at times. We wonder, how is it that I'm meant to stay motivated as a Christian day in and day out? Mm -hmm. The great news is we have a trainer. <laughs> we really do have a trainer. We have God himself who's accessible every single moment of the day just for you to say, hey, June, hey, Gabby, I'm here with you. I will walk with you. I will train you every single day, and I will help you to be your very best for God, for me. <laughs> help you be your very best. That's what we have when it comes to our quiet time. You know, my goal today is to help us see that quiet times can be exciting because quiet times are the time when we allow God himself to coach us and train us to be our very best, to become righteous. And I'll share with you a lot of things that I personally do that, do that helps me to be able to get deeper in with God. But my encouragement to you to start off is let God be your trainer. Let God be your trainer using the word of God itself. And we'll look at how that's able to happen. Come on, come on, Dwayne. Tell me about the 2 Timothy 3. Mm 
try to wait till the last of the pages. Lessons. Second one to Alright, we're jumping in. <laughs> Second Timothy 3. 14. Starting in verse 14, I'll read. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those things from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, <laughs> and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be generally equipped for every good work. This Scripture, we're so familiar with the Scripture. Well, like, yeah. I studied the Bible with tons of people. I've, I've seen the scripture before. God breathed, teaching, rebuking, all that good stuff. Hopefully, as we dive into this passage, I want you to see that this scripture is so applicable, not necessarily just to the seeker, but to the person who wants to be equipped to do every good thing that God wants them to do. This applies to us. You know, here, just to give you a little background, so Paul is encouraging Timothy because he's telling them, hey, Timothy, there's going to be a lot of terrible times happening. It's going to be tough in the church and outside the church. You're going to have persecutions. People are going to be ungrateful. People won't be loving. And you'll be surrounded by these types of people. And you'll have to jump in there and deal with these types of people on a regular basis. But don't lose heart. Because you know that you have the Holy Scripture. You have the, the, the power of God. You have his wisdom. that's able to make you wise through faith in Christ Jesus. And he tells them that the Bible is useful. It's useful. It will equip you for every single good thing you want to do, Timothy. It's useful. And what I want to encourage us to start off with as we're jumping in, the Bible is purposeful. It's useful. There's a point to reading your Bible. And I don't know for you, but I know for me, I get the most out of my Bible studies when I realize that the Bible is intentional. Yeah. When I'm purposeful and intentional in my Bible studies, those are times when I get the most out of it. What do I mean when I say in being intentional? A lot of you all have it, aren't in college, you're getting ready for college, but you're here in class. I got some pictures here. But being in, for me in grad school, I went to ODU, you know, you know, Ode Dominion University, and it's amazing when I took nighttime classes, there was one phenomenon that I was really amazed by. There was a big difference between us students who took nighttime classes who were just going there because we knew we needed to get a good grade to pass this class and get out and not care about this stuff no more. At least that's what we thought, you know. Versus those full-time workers who took this class at night because they knew that there was some issues happening in their job and that this class would help them be able to resolve. Mm -hmm. So for example, for us students who kind of came, it was on the curriculum, we're like, yeah, all right, model and assimilation. <laughs> wow. We're sitting there like, man, OK, I know I need to be here. It's the right thing to do. I have to be in this class. But you know, that's about it. I'm not really that engaged. I'm not excited to be there. I'm not eager to dig. I'm not asking the teacher questions. I'm like, please hurry up. <laughs> Just tell me why I need to know for the test so I can pass. Mm -hmm. Those people who are out there in the, in, in the workforce who took this class, knowing that they needed to learn modeling and simulation in order to get their job done, and they saw how hard it was in their job to be able to model different events, they would be in class like, hey, hey, teacher, what about this? What about that? Hey, let's talk at the class. Hey, and they're sitting in the front row, jumping up, asking all these questions, and I'm like, hey, what's up with these guys? But that's because they understood, I need this stuff. There's a very intentional purpose they had with investing the time after work to come to this class. They were very intentional. I think for a lot of us in our Bible studies, we could be like the first group of students. We sit in front of the Bible, and we know it's right. You know, how there's a bad thing. We know it's right to be in our Bible. We know God wants us to be in our Bible. We know it's a good thing. But other than that, we don't really have a big intention of why we're opening up the Bible in the first place and we're digging in. I think for us, we have to approach our Bible studies like the other students, where we're intentional. Are you intentional when you, go, when you open your, up your Bible? Do you know specifically what's going on in your life where you feel like, I need encouragement in this area? I need to understand God this way. 
I need to understand how I can change and become righteous in this way. What is it that you want to grow in? Have an attention. That's my first encouragement to you. Have an attention when it comes to your Bible study. You know, I, I think uh, got some ideas here. You know, what's what's going on? Do you want to get deeper in your in your prayer life? Maybe you feel like prayer. You feel like you're just speaking to yourself all the time, or maybe you feel like it's hard to praise God. Maybe you wonder what's the purpose of prayer anyway. My mom talks about it all the time. I see people doing it. What's the big deal? Maybe you just want to get deeper. Maybe you want help with. Not for you guys, for your marriage. But one day, maybe you want to learn, so you'll be equipped. <coughs> hey, it's a cross prayer study. You can do it. <laughs> maybe you want to learn about suffering. Maybe you want. Maybe you feel like you're going through a hard time with your family, a hard time with friendships mm-hmm. or relationships. You feel like, man, how do, how do I, how do I, how do I have, how do I go through suffering with a godly attitude? Maybe it might be something you need to inspire you. I just need to get inspired. I just, I just haven't cared for a long time. How do I get inspired again? Maybe it might be confidence. You know, maybe you feel like, God, I'm just fearful all the time. You know, I struggle with that big time. Just being fearful. I feel like, man, how do I just gain confidence? Maybe it's faith. Maybe you just feel ungrateful. You want to learn how to be more grateful. My, 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 my only thing I'm trying to get across here is have an intention. Have an intention. Have an intention. Yeah. It'll make your Bible studies come to life in a great way. And think of something specific. All right? Don't just think... Well, I want to be strong spiritually. That's my goal. I want to be stronger in the Lord. What does that even mean? You know, and, and I understand, don't get me wrong, I think a lot of times we don't necessarily need to have some deep intention. I mean, I think wanting to be close to God is, is good enough. You know what I mean? And especially if we're doing the Bible in the year or something like that, as we read through the Bible, the Holy Spirit will pop things up at us that will inspire us and encourage us. Yeah. All I'm saying is there's a big difference between walking into a weight room thinking, hey, I just want to get stronger for these next 25 minutes. Versus someone who goes to the weight room thinking, all right, I need, my, I need my hamstrings to get stronger. I need to work on my quads so I can get up the block if I'm a track runner uh, so I can jump, get that, get that dunk. <laughs> you <gonna> dunk <laughs> get that dunk. You know what I mean? Think about how different your workout would be compared to the person who walks into this gym saying, hey, I just want to get stronger. Hey, it might be okay, but you won't leave out there thinking, yes! I just accomplished something. I am different as a result of what I just did. I'm spending an hour of my life in front of this, in front of the Bible. Let me make the most of it. Come on, Lord. And one thing I like to do, and I'll maybe give you an example of what I can do. You know, for me, before I use, normally I've been doing this since I was a young Christian. Uh, before I study a different a topic or even a book of the Bible, normally I'll sit down and I'll just write out why I'm reading this book. Why am I reading this book? You know, take a little time, write a page, and just write out why am I reading this book, and what do I hope to see happen in my life as a result. Uh, recently, last year, I studied the book of 1 Corinthians. It was incredible because um, I wanted to study out the importance of, of being living in community rather than being individualistic. And I knew this is something that I struggle with: is selfishness, pride, and so and I, I read to you some thoughts that I wrote down. I just jumped, I got it on my phone. Uh, but I wrote, why am I study, why am I deciding to study individualism? By nature, I'm selfishly ambitious. I care about being great for God myself, feeling good about myself, and not about other people being great. Uh, by nature, I want to be self-sufficient. Um, I think that there's something wrong with me if I need to get help from other people. What does that say about me? That I think I'm good enough for my own. Uh, and I have all these different examples of how, how uh, you know, I don't take care of my wife. I'm not concerned about her needs, so I want to grow in it. Uh, I'm not great at building strong ties with brothers and relationships with brothers, so I want to grow in that. Um, the list goes on, you know. And just talk, you know, even there's some thoughts I have of uh, how I feel like this book going to help me. It says the Corinthians were proud and they were caught in, they were caught up in the wisdom they had rather than the love they should have had. Uh, hopefully, I will be filled with love instead of knowledge as well. As a result of reading this, so it's encouraging to write something like that now because it helps me while I'm jumping into this book to think, here's what I'm searching for, mm-hmm. and like Proverbs two talks about, I'm going through the scriptures, looking for wisdom like it's a treasure, you know, like it's silver, like it's gold, and as things pop up to me, pop out at me, I'm excited about it. All right, moving on. That makes sense. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so we know the Bible is useful for making us righteous. How does the Bible 
accomplished this task? How is it able to help us with this intention we set it out to have? Well, Paul gives two ways that the Bible has helped us to accomplish whatever intention we set out for. One, he says, all scripture is God read. And the second thing he says is, it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. You know, all scripture is God breathed. Let's start with that. What does that mean? I'm going to ask you, what do you think it means? All scripture is God breathed. Yes. Okay, yep, God had a lot to do with it. Yep, it's true. Really. It's true. <laughs> but uh, it's literally like coming from the mouth of God. Sure. God breathe, like you didn't breathe it out, and the words are written down by us from what he was saying to us. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah, we, we read this scripture lots of times. Pretty much all scripture comes out of the mouth of God. It's as if God himself is speaking to us. It's his inspiration. It comes from him. It oozes out of him. It's from God himself. And as a church, you know, we're often committed to sitting down with people, looking at them in the face, reading scriptures with them, asking them questions to help them wrestle with the scripture, and then encouraging them with some kind of practicals to leave from their Bible study. So for me, since I, since I know that the Bible is from God, it comes from God, I literally look at my quiet times as now God studying the Bible with me. Yeah. That now I'm sitting down with God, mm. he's looking at me, he says, all right, Dwayne, you got your pancakes ready now? <laughs> well, now my, you know, I changed my diet this year, so I hit my oatmeal and banana. <laughs> got them black, so, you know. <laughs> Slim. <laughs> he says, all right, Dwayne, now that you got your oatmeal ready and your banana, let's talk a little bit. Let's talk about the scriptures. Let's sit down, let's look at who I am. I got some secrets for you, I want to tell you. Let's talk about some of my secrets. I'm going to share them with you. I want, to find, I want you to wrestle with these things and, fit, and make sense of them so that you can leave and apply it to your life. You know, and that, 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 that alone makes me enter my quiet times in a totally different life. When I realize this is an encounter with the Almighty God Himself. He's ready to coach me, He's ready to train me. If you're a woman, maybe you can look at it as this is my date with God. You know, maybe this is my time, my, my, my cup of tea time with God. Whatever helps you to connect. But really, our quiet times are a divine encounter, nothing less than that. And we have to understand that as we approach it. You know, it really is like Moses. You know, when Moses went on the mountain, and they said he would look at God, and they would talk face to face. This is your face to face time with God. And that really does change your perspective towards your quiet times, because it helps you re- it helps you realize what's really going on when you sit and open your Bible. Yeah. That God Himself is connecting with us. God himself is trying to get through to us through our Bible study. Do we realize that? This is God trying to get through to us. Um, and I guess we have to look at this from the seven R's. This could be your ready stage, if I can say that. You know, that we're, we're readying ourselves as we approach this encounter with God. Here, this is for the ladies, you know, the tea time. I don't know how God looks. Guys have a face, but we know he's ready. So second, the God the Bible is God read, but we also know it's useful for teaching, rebuking, directing, and training in righteousness. Well, in order for it to accomplish that task, we know first we have to read it. That's important. Amen. After we sat down, we sat down with God. We read the scripture. But what next? What do we do after we read? We reflect. We spend time reflecting and time recording. Now, reflecting and recording, uh, we can have some different feelings towards the idea of meditating on God, meditating with God. We're like, all right, what does that even mean? Let me encourage you. First of all, you don't have to be a monk. To learn how to reflect and meditate on God. You don't have to be a super emotional person whose feelings are all just, you know, 
wearing them all over your body in order to be, to be able to, to reflect with God. But what I will tell you, it will require thinking. I know the guys might be like, oh, snap. What do you mean by thinking? Yes. <laughs> it does require thinking. Well, hopefully I'll share some simple points that can help you to be able to think. But, you know, to meditate does mean to reflect, to ponder on, to contemplate, to really be able to focus your mind on something. And I do believe this is a disadvantage in our culture because we're so used to just being busy doing stuff. Mm -hmm. even, even spiritually, we're so used to just doing stuff, even spiritually. They're good things. Yeah, I'm sharing my faith. Yeah. You know, I just confessed my sin. Yeah, I just did. And we're so used to doing things that I believe we don't even have time to hear God speaking to us. Yeah. Period. I don't believe we do. We're too crowded. We're too, our, our, our lives are too crowded. And, and Psalm 10 says that even the wicked and the proud, there's no room in, the, in their thoughts for God. Yeah. You know, we have to be willing to make the time see, right? to mm -hmm. think. To sit and think. It's funny, there's a book by Francis Chan called Crazy Love. And the first chapter is called Stop Praying. He doesn't mean you should stop praying. But what he's saying is we spend so much time talking at God rather than being willing to sit and listen. To what he's trying to tell us. For us, we gotta be willing to sit and listen. Uh, and in order to be able to do that, I believe we really have to make make time. Like we, we look at the scripture, we look at Jesus. You know, Jesus when he went to a solitary to a solitary place, he would come back. He would say, "All right, I'm ready to preach. I have to spend this time. I'm ready to go preach." That's the reason why I was sent in Luke four. When we think about Moses, when he has his face-to-face -face time with God, he comes down, and the Bible says he's radiant. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that looks like. I think it's scary, though. You know? You ever have those times you're doing so well spiritually, you feel just, I'm so scary. You know? Like, I don't even know how to handle all of this joy, all this conviction I have. That's the way we want to be. But here's an easy way to go about meditating. I want to keep it simple for us to make it really clear, especially for the guys who feel like, man, this is... Reflecting, recording, this is like school. Come on. But for me, honestly, a lot of my quiet time are simply just a list of questions. In fact, if you're looking through a lot of my journals, I'm just asking questions and I'm answering the questions. It's really that simple. And if we want to look at it from the scripture, we can look at a list of questions that can teach us about what we're learning. A list of questions that can help rebuke us. A list of questions that can help correct us. And a list of questions that can help to train us. I believe if we become good at just asking ourselves questions, which is what we do in any Bible study, right? Just ask people questions. We don't just read the scripture and say, how do you feel about that? But we know it, 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 won't, it won't help them to be able to meditate. Questions force you to meditate and get engaged with the Bible itself. So what I have here is just a list of some questions that Normally, I might ask myself to help me to be able to learn. So, for example, when it comes to teaching, the Bible is useful for teaching. What are some things that, that what are some questions? I got hit some written down here. Uh, if you want to write them down, you can write them down. What point is God making about himself from the scripture? You know, right here in Psalm 103, it might say, the Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love. What is God trying to say about himself? Wrestle with that. Wrestle with this idea of him being slow to anger. Think about that. What does that mean? When does God become angry? Not quickly. <laughs> you know? How does that change my view of God? What is God saying about us? About mankind in general? You know, as we read about God being slow to anger, that means that, man, when I mess up, God's first response is to strike me over the head. That he's compassionate, yeah. gracious. What does that say about how he feels about mankind? He's loving. Are there other passages that support this truth? This is kind of cool. You start thinking about different stories. Ed did all this last week. We talked about different illustrations that might pop in your head from the Bible. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember. When God forgave Cain, even after he killed his brother. Whoa. Yeah. Definitely saw the anger. What is the theme of this passage? What's the big point? What is God trying to communicate? And also, we can look at different words and think, what do these specific words mean? 
know, the Bible says something like, you know, love always trust, always hopes, always perseveres. Why does he use the word always? What does always mean? That means there's never, there's never an exception that I can always make on the fact that love will hope for people, love will persevere. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Questions? Yeah, also, we can ask ourselves a list of questions to rebuke. For example, what are some recent situations where I've been this way? And maybe there's a sin you're studying out or a character you're looking at. What are some recent situations? Why do I say recent? Because we want to deal with what's going on right now in our hearts and our lives. Why did I think it was okay? You know, I was selfish with my wife. Yeah, I was that way with my wife. Or I was deceitful. What makes me that way? Why did I think it was okay? Because I didn't want to get in trouble. But I felt like no one would find out. So I think it's better. And I'll get away with it. The life will be better if one, no one knows. Are there other indi indicators in my life of this issue? It's a good question to ask yourself. What are some other times where I try to not speak the truth? Yeah. Maybe it's when it comes to confessing my faith. When people ask me questions, I'm like, oh, I don't want to tell them what I did. Mm -hmm. Let me make it sound a little different. Mm -hmm. It's good because as you ask yourself these questions, all it's doing is helping you to really put yourself into the, into the Bible and see how you can relate to that character of that scripture. Another question I have is, what hinders me from being God in this area, from doing what is right? Maybe it can be some, the way I grew up. Maybe it can be, I don't know. I might have done the blank. You think about it. But this, this part is very important, by the way. Because if, we if we're not allowing the Bible to help us see ourselves and who we are, then what are we doing? We're just being really religious. We're just learning a lot of cool facts about God, and we're like, yeah, God is good. God is loving. And we're doing nothing about it. It's not affecting who we are in any way at all. And I think this is one of those things that if we get good at it, the Bible will be exciting. And I'll tell you why a little more as we, as we end off. But don't become like a Pharisee, knowing a lot of information, but not allowing it to we're not listening to what it's trying to say about you. Yeah. Yeah, come on. It's useful for correcting, encouraging. Questions I have, what does the Bible say is the right perspective for me to have in this situation? I'm angry because somebody hurt my feelings. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> somebody hurt my feelings. What's the right perspective for me to have? According to what I just read, I'll just make up some known things. What does the Bible say is my perspective for me that? What inspires me about this passage? You know, what's some good things that encourage me about it, that what motivates me to want to put this into practice? Once again, are there any real life examples to help me understand this concept? You know, maybe you could look at, if you're afraid of confessing, you know, look at situations where people have hid their sin in real life. Think about some celebrities who tried to hide stuff. What happened? Was it better for them? Or was it worse? They always look more like a fool later on. Um, you know, it's funny. <laughs> the one time my son had, uh, he, I don't even know why I'm sharing this. It's funny. <laughs> my son had uh, took some cake. It was, there was some cake in the, in, on, on the stove. And he had, uh, he had rubbed his finger through it. He had licked it while we, were, while we weren't paying attention. He ran his room. Didn't say anything about it. So we go in the room. <laughs> Like icing all over his face. <laughs> so like, excuse me, man. Did you touch the cake? I, I, I was I was in here. I was in here. You sure about that, man? I was I was I was in here playing with my toy. Finally confessed, hey, amen. Uh, feeling a lot. If you ask him about it, he'll confess it again. But. That's probably how God looks at us. We're like, come on, dude. Written <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> really, it made, it made me think about how God looks at us when we try to hide, hide our sin. But also, the, the big thing, as, as I end off this point, is write the answers down in a journal. Okay? Why is it important to write the answers down in a journal? Come on, Dwayne. Why don't I just ask myself these questions and move forward? Well, a lot of times, writing, writing this stuff down in the journal forces you to not be shallow in your thinking. It also forces you to not, it, it helps you not to be able to flip from one idea to another in your head without really learning anything. That's what happens when, you know, for me, when I don't write things down, 
yeah, I get some good ideas, but none of it sticks. I just move forward, and I really haven't learned much of anything. But writing allows you to build off a thought, build off of that thought, build off of that thought, and it will stick. And it forces you to actually have to think through what you're thinking about. So write the answers down in the journal. And lastly, a list of questions to, to train. How will I put this into practice today? How will I be different as a result? So you don't have to ask yourself all these questions while you're reading your Bible. I'm just giving you a list of ideas, okay? Um, just to spark your thinking. This is really important. Why is it important to ask yourself, how will I be different as a result? Because you want this to count for something. You want the Bible to count for something. Then the cool thing is the next day, you can revisit what you wrote down in your journal and see how did it go. Did it go great? Or, eh, maybe it didn't go so well. And that's okay. You're just helping to learn about how you're doing, and uh, you always get the next day to spend the practice. Amen? So, I want to wrap up with a few thoughts. And we'll come to end it all. Benefits. Before we jump into this part, I do want to share what are the benefits of meditating. I think I want to I want to reiterate this point. Meditating and reflecting is very important. For me, I don't even feel like I had a real quiet time. I haven't reflected on it and wrote some things down. For me personally, I'm not saying you, you have to be that way, but for me, I know that's not actually can tell that I, I, I've changed the result. You know, I believe meditation first of all it gives you insight into who God is. When you're able to meditate and think through who God is, the Bible gets exciting. It's encouraging. You're learning things from the Old Testament, how it relates to the New, and you're like, man, I got so much insight on who God is. Because I just spent some extra time thinking about it. Also, the second reason why I think meditation is so important, because it gives you insight into who you are. I don't know about you, but as a guy, I'm a lot better now, but back in the day, I, would, I hated when people asked me, Dwayne, how are you doing? I hated that question. How are you doing? I don't know how I'm doing. This is frustrating me. Why do I know how I'm doing? I don't. You want me to tell you about what I just did just now? How I'm feeling about this morning? I don't even know how I feel about this morning. I don't know. But I don't think about this stuff. I just go. And uh, what I found encouraging is that now, with reflecting in my quiet time, now whenever someone asks me how I'm doing, I can always think about my quiet time and say, okay. What did God reveal to me during my quiet time? At least that's the one time I know during the day I'm actually <laughs> thinking about how I'm doing. Yeah. For women, you're, you're much better at this. You talk about how you're doing all the time. So, you, know, you, you, you can't wait. <laughs> I thought that's right. right? But for guys, I think that's the problem. You have to take the extra time. <laughs> Let's figure out how am I doing. Because right. I believe, I believe like, you'd be amazed. There's people who get paid tons of money as counselors just to right. tell you, give you insight into who you are. You're like, whoa, thank you. You didn't really help me. But thank you for telling me that I'm selfish. And now I see it. I put the pieces together and it makes sense. It's exciting because it helps you to understand who you are and be able to go with you where you need to go. So, some words of advice, some words of wisdom. So, one thing you might be thinking is, is you, as you hear all these things I'm saying is, Dwayne, I love you, bro. Appreciate you taking the time. But I ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> And you might be wrestling with that idea. Well, she got her own show too. Let, let me share. Let me share these few things. She I know many of you guys are doing the Bible in the year, and you're probably thinking, "Look, I ain't got time to ask all these myself questions. I'm just trying to get money to learn and get out of there. Like, I get to work, or I have an appointment. I get to school. It's old dark hour right now. If that's the case, you can just pick maybe one question to ask yourself. For me, normally in the morning, I don't have a lot of time. I'm trying to get myself to school. My daughter's in school. She might have an accident. I got to deal with that. Um, I got to fix their food. All this stuff is going on. I have to get in there and get out. So what I do normally in those situations is ask myself, okay, three questions. What's the big idea here? What is God trying to get across? How does it apply to me? And how will I be different as a result? Okay? I don't want you to feel discouraged because you feel like you don't have the time. Just keep it simple. Second thing is, you might be thinking, is this the only way to reflect? No. Okay? I'm just giving you some ideas. There's tons of ways to reflect and meditate in the Bible. I remember, I, remember uh, I learned from Kendrick back in the day to draw pictures. All right? I thought it was weird. I saw him draw some diagrams, like, like a Venn diagram. I was like, what is he doing? I started doing it. I fell in love with it. It was awesome. Different. You can make charts. I 
done that before. Why well, write a chart? Just have you know one column is Moses and one column is me, and looking at some of his excuses and then writing down my excuses and comparing and, and contrast. You can do a lot of cool stuff like that. And it really helps you put, to, to record your thoughts. All I'm saying is spend the time to reflect. Uh-uh. It's not the only way, but I guarantee you this is an easy way to ask yourself questions. We do it all the time. We do it in every Bible study. We do it in every Bible talk. If you go to a Bible talk, what do people do in a Bible talk? They're asking questions to, to, to the audience. During wow. any devotional book you read at the end of the chapter, there's questions. You're like, oh, man, these questions are so deep. I learned so much. All I do is ask you some questions to help you think. That's it. Is that simple? Yeah. Ask yourself some questions, and it makes you think about the scripture. Mm-hmm. And lastly, I want to end off by saying, please, don't give up. Don't give up journaling. Don't give up recording if you feel like it's weird when you first start doing it, if you haven't done it already. Don't give up. Because this is where the change really happens, I believe. Is when we really start wrestling with the scripture. That's the when we finally start. The Bible becomes something that we own up to. It's not just something that's spoon-fed to us, but it becomes our own conviction. We're like, man, I understand it. I got something out of it because I spent the time thinking. You know, I do believe that often we become really lazy and we become dependent upon other people to feed us spiritually. Yeah. And other people to expose us. Other people to help us with our trouble. Because we have to learn how to go to God ourselves and wrestle with the scripture. And I just want to encourage you, there's no better feeling than struggling with some sin and open up your Bible and wrestling with the text. And to finally, at the end of the at the end of your study, you're like, man, I think differently now. Yes. Praise God. Thank Praise you. God. I understand grace better. Mm-hmm. Praise God. I understand how to love my wife better. Or how to love other people in the church better. Praise God, I have some clarity now on how to be more patient. Some clarity on how to be more disciplined. Praise God, there's no better feeling than wrestling with the text yeah. coming away with new insight. On, so man. I want to encourage us, don't be lazy. Keep fighting at it. And I tell you, once you get good at this stuff, it becomes easier and easier. And the next thing you know, you'll be writing sermons as you're having quiet time. Three points, all that stuff. You better preach. You better, how's your quiet time? Oh, 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 oh. Let me tell you. <laughs> See, not even the entire. I got three points. Seriously, it's not that hard. That's why I want to tell my It's not that hard. So, that's all I wanted to share. 815, and it seems really quiet in there. Um, any questions at all? Maybe? Any questions, thoughts, anything? JC? Man, like, Mr. Collins. Um, Pick up your gifts. It is a good thing. Like, you kept saying, like, you gotta ask me questions. You should show more love. You should have to pay attention. You have to ask me what's my favorite. It didn't look like it. It's right there. Excellent. Like, I was like, oh, man, like, how long has it been? I've been asking questions. Like, five times. I just, all I gotta do, I did it. Alright, I'm gonna knock it off. Like, really get deep into Why am I truly reading this? What can I add to my life at the moment? All those great questions. But appreciate you sharing that with us. Cool. We can wrap up with a prayer. Um, what's my prayer? I don't know. Loud. You loud? Okay.